These are some original daffodils that have been at our house uh, before we moved in here 33 years ago or so. And these weeds, which I think are pretty, have probably been here just as long. Rose, climbing rose is really filling out. The bridal's wreath just started blooming a few days ago and there are not very many branches but it's going to be beautiful probably in a week. We moved this burning bush from the backyard to the front yard so that we could allow it to get bigger and um, be in more sun so it will show its red and I'm excited to see it made it through because we have buds coming out beautiful patch of daffodils at the street, at the ditch, and here's one of them old ones that have been around forever. Zoiza in the front yard is not greening up yet, but we have a whole lot of onion-free area, and then we have this patch that hasn't been done yet. I am so excited about the hyacinth that is blooming in front of the daffodils. It's so pretty and cute. Okay, how about lovely? This one seems to be more of a light yellow and those are all purple. I love purple. And then we still have the crocus blooming here, although we have new leaves settling in. The forsythia bloomed a few days ago midweek this is friday march 13th and uh, it's blooming on the lower branches not so much the upper branches so it's not very showy but at least it's blooming we have quite a few beautiful daffodils blooming in the front yard they look so great against the blue on the swing and we have some gorgeous hyacinth blooming here as well. Um, I think these are huge alliums. I still need to look that up, what that is. Uh, the pale, um, I think they're icicle daffodils. Those come from uh, the old ones we used to have in the backyard where we have thousands of them. Uh, but we did plant some new daffodils. This hyacinth has been here for quite a while. There's a little fern doing well under the chair. We were gifted with some cabbage. That's a lot of cabbage. I said, sure, I like cabbage, I'll plant it. Apparently this was a school project and they had plenty of extra cabbage. So, a surprise, um, we get to plant cabbage and grow it for the first time. So today the walkway is looking so much more adorable. I just wish it were warmer out here so I could sit on the patio and enjoy it more. But I'll enjoy it from the window and uh, my daily walks in the yard. The little purple ones aren't um, that prolific, but you can see them. And there's one there. They are pretty cute if you look for them. This is just adorable. We need to get some grass seed planted in and around these. There's a little purple one there. I think this is a mass of tulips getting ready to come up. Those are those really tall yellow plants that by mid summer they're going to be really gorgeous. I have some tulips I believe that's what that is in a pot. That's going to be so fun when it blooms. I have a new little patch of crocus. I think these have been here a while. I'm not sure but um, today's the first day I saw them blooming. They're so adorable and they're back here in this bed. This bed's getting ready to explode. Now we have had in the past thousands of daffodils and we 
we uh, have uh, dug them up and we shared them gave away some sold some and uh, we did plant new ones but I'm telling you it looks like mostly old ones that we didn't do very well digging up still blooming these ones that are um, bright yellow in the middle I think they're icicle or whatever that those are the older ones that have been here a long time we do have a lot less of them but uh, obviously some of them survived our digging and uh, this looks like a mass of hyacinths they're one of my favorite flowers getting ready to come up so here's a quick look at this bed getting ready to explode we have something in the front and then something in the back and it looks like this is fun I don't know if you can see it how it hugs the curvature of the uh, bed so fun and this is the purple poppy mallow plant you can see I need to get in here and get the onions out of it but this is one of my favorite plants and I'm so glad to see it doing well this thing when it gets going is going to fill up this entire space and even go that way and uh, I have one in the front yard I haven't checked on how it's doing it was new last year and I might get me another one or two at the sale at the conservation department tomorrow these cute little guys are still doing well and the little crocus patch here isn't quite doing as good but we have some hyacinth blooming and then look at how adorable this is i didn't realize that it exploded like that this you're seeing it the first time i'm seeing it now there are some little bitty i guess they're grape hyacinth plants in the front they're not as showy as i thought they would be maybe they will get that way but look at all the they're tiny daffodils aren't they cute <laughs> i like this one that decided to grow up in the middle of the chair No signs of any growth on the wisteria um, or the uh, crepe myrtle, but it's really early to see signs of that. Oh my goodness, these are so cute. I shared these last week because the ones on this end were blooming. They look like some sort of hyacinth. I need to look up what I bought. They're so adorable and little. I have some peach colored lilies that come up in here and I see they're starting to grow. And around this rose bush that's coming out are some more of those itty bitty blue ones. <laughs> they're all the way around them. Not all of them are blooming. blooming. I may need to plant more to make it more showy next year. So when we were gallivanting around uh, looking for abandoned places, we found this quince bush at um, an abandoned house, the one that had actually been flooded. And it this is almost a week later and this thing is still blooming, but it's so exciting. We decided to just take one branch of it. We left the rest, of course. And um, we stuck it in the water here, and we're hoping it'll root so we can plant it in the yard. But I don't know, but it's awfully cute. So here are the paper whites inside. I think these are the last blooms. I had said they were going to bloom through about mid-March, and we're not getting any new ones. And like this one here is starting to die back. So I think this is the last, but it's just in time to enjoy all the things outside. And then I'm going to have to maybe cut these all back even and let them die back, I guess. I wish I could replant them and know they'll bloom next year inside. 
Not sure what I'm supposed to do to make that happen. And here are what the zinnias look like that were growing inside, and I hope they're doing okay. They look okay. Um, they haven't made a whole lot of growth in the last week, which is good because I'm afraid I planted them too early. Okay, so I'm back from the native plant sale at the conservation building here in Cape Girardeau, and I love that sale. I love the native plants. I love the help I get. I have to go there every year. He recommended this squaw weed, also round leaf groundle for that area back in my bed where we have the water that rushes through um, and uh, that I want to plant something in. And this stays green even through the winter and it's low, like a ground cover, and I think it's going to be perfect. I was wondering what to put in there, and the guy knew right what to do. And I bought a couple more uh, purple poppy mallows. I love these, so I want to put one in the side bed in the front yard, and I want to put one in the new bed in the backyard by the pergola. And then I also got another um, uh, milkweed, and uh, it <laughs> looks rather dormant. I've tried to grow these before and then they do nothing. But I'm going to give it another go. I got a uh, little wild sweet william, one of my favorite flowers. I have a patch in the front yard, but every time I try to move it to the um, backyard, it doesn't go. This is a interesting cone flower that I thought would be cool. Got a new bird house that's hand built. It's octagon and I have a pipe that is 10 foot long that um, we have to cut uh, for it to go on. It was so funny. Um, I had that sitting on top of my cart and I was telling everybody it was my social distancing rod and they were laughing and I thought it was funny. So it's Saturday I'm so anxious to get out here and work and do things. Instead, we have rain. Rain, 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 rain. But I wish I were just sitting out here with a cup of tea, looking at this. It's so adorable. So it's a cold, rainy, yucky day. And... <laughs> We've discovered that water sets here. It's kind of going down, so we're going to put some topsoil in there um, to fill it in. And we've got this spot over here that we've got topsoil for that we need to raise the bricks, but that's going to be for a different day. Look how tall the grass is getting. That's all new grass. So I'm so excited to have the grass, but first sunny day when it's dry and we're gonna have to mow already. We got all these little weed flowers in the yard that I need to get out here and hand pick it while it's wet but uh, they used to cover this whole area so we're doing pretty good. Bought some more grass seed I need to put it out in this area. We got a lot of new grass but this is where uh, the water runs and We've got the walkway, so it goes down into a dip here, so the water can run off that way. We had problems before with it backing up over there before we uh, fixed this walkway and gave it a path to go. Most people would not get outside on a cold, rainy day. I mean, it's still drizzling out here. But I find it refreshing and I feel so good even if I just walk around out here right after a rain. I keep showing you these, but they're so pretty. I feel like we're down at the farm where you get outside and have to work. But honestly, if you don't get out here and look right after a rain or during a rain, you don't know when these spots are. And it's best to fill it in while the water is still there. That way you can put the, the dirt in and watch it displace the water back where it needs to go. 
And if you wait later, you won't know. I see some water setting down there, too. So, there's always so much to do around this place to maintain it, but I, we love that it gets us outdoors and gives us a reason to be outside. So I bought this adorable fringe. It took us a while standing there deciding what we wanted to buy and the cost. But this is so French, white, pretty. So um, this fringe is going to go on the edge of that tarp after we um, get we cut the wood for some supporting sides that we have to hammer in, and then we'll paint it white. And while he's painting it white, another day it's raining. Um, I'm going to sew this fringe along the edge of that tarp and it's going to be so cute. So what I'm doing right now though is I'm taking this and I am spraying it and waterproofing it. I got to turn it over now. I did one side and we're also waterproofing the uh, bean bag. So I need to order some sort of tarp or something to go under the bean bag to kind of protect it. We're trying to make it as outdoor uh, friendly as possible. We just added a whole blanket in it. Not, not a blanket, it was an old bedspread inside of it. And <laughs> it had just like swallowed it up like there was nothing there. So I'm trying to think how I want to rearrange the patio for this season and how to fit this huge bean bag, which I love, into the patio. But everything, there's so much to do and you got to do one little step at a time. So and we had to uh, de-stuff it and re-stuff it and stuff it more and we're still stuffing it and now we're spraying it and then we're going to have to rearrange and find a home so we did hacksaw that pipe to seven foot for the new bird house and i'm um, going to paint the bird house i think and the table that was black is uh, gotten its first coat of spray paint white. See? It's 40 degrees out here. It's a perfect day. And he's going to give my tea tray a once over. And we've got this metal basket container at Christmas time as a gift. And I'm going to repurpose it and we're going to spray paint it white. And I don't know what. I'm going to figure out some way to use it in the yard. So our new fence was put up last year and we have to go through um, there's a water standing around that post and it's just going to get deeper if we don't fill it in, so we're filling it in.